Christine Bell and I'm the blended advanced marketing teacher here at Naperville Central High School. This is my first blended course I'm teaching and I've learned quite a bit. Hi, my name is Jennifer Madden and I've been teaching blended health. This is my third semester teaching it. Hi, my name is Melissa Escroba and I am a fax teacher at Naperville North High School. The blended course that I teach is the blended consumer economics. Hello, my name is John Nofke and I am a social studies teacher here at Naperville North High School. The uh, blended course that I've been teaching for the past year and a half is um, Blended American Government. This course is taught to primarily sophomores in, um, and is, we've been running it as a first period class here at Naperville North. Hi, uh, I'm Rod Porter. I teach at Naperville Central High School. Hi, I'm Nikki Weiss. I teach Blended AP Lang at Naperville Central. Hi, I'm Dave Slacky. I've been teaching blended learning for a couple years now. Hi, I'm Diane Sherry and I'm a science teacher here at Naperville North. This year I taught blended anatomy and physiology. Um, it was my first year teaching a blended course, so it was a new experience for me. And I'd have to say it was a, a great experience, it was a great learning, great opportunity. So I have a few pieces of advice that I wish I would have thought of when I was starting. I think the relationship with the students is extremely important. You may be concerned that you see them less. In reality, you probably end up seeing them just about the same amount of time. If you group your students properly, if students come to get help from you while you're with them, the quality of time is greater, the work is more focused. So I think all of your relationships will be just as strong, if not stronger, than in a regular general classroom. Don't worry about the student relationships. People who are traditional classroom teachers, we love being with students and we love certain lessons. When you become a blended teacher, you got to let some of that, those lessons you like go, but you don't lose the relationship with the students. They still talk to you, you still get to know their names, you still have a very big presence in their lives. You, it's just more of a digital uh, aspect. For example, I use the Remind tool a lot in my um, ELO course. And I find that I often talk to some of my online students just as much, if not more, than some of my traditional students because in a class of 30, do you really have a pretty meaningful conversation with all 30 students? No. Same thing in an online class. It varies week to week who you talk to. And with an online, with a blended course, you're often able to meet more one-on-one -on -one with students and get to know them better. So don't worry about the relationships. They'll take care of themselves. Take advantage of the great opportunity to get to know your kids and get to know them really well. It feels like you don't see them as much because they'll have some days in and some days out. But when you do see them, it's a lot more of quality time because you're being um, very um, purposeful with what you're talking to them about. So you get to really meet them where they are in their curriculum and get to help them and progress them from where they are to where you want them to be. My biggest piece of advice for anyone starting out into blended is don't be afraid to try something new and even if it fails um, you can get a good experience you can be really honest with your students of I'm trying this and we'll see if it works um, don't be afraid to do something a little bit different than maybe some of the colleagues who are teaching the traditional um, course is if it's still hitting the same standards and you're just approaching it in a little bit different way because of the blended environment um, give it a shot it might be awesome it might horribly fail um, but that's all part of the process your students are very forgiving um, you are a very resilient teacher and even in some of those um, misses we learn a whole lot uh, along the way don't be afraid to try something new this year in my blended course, I've been really trying to improve um, student-led discussion. I've discovered that a lot of students who take my blended course are a little more of an introverted personality. Thus, they like online lessons. I know that's very shocking to believe. But I've been trying something I've always wanted to do, which is I, every time a student comes in from an independent day or a, an online learning day, uh, I have a different student start class off with about five to seven minute um, prepared questions in which they ask their classmates what they learned online. That's totally new this year. It was definitely out of my comfort zone because I was doing that and I was driving the ship and I felt like I was reteaching too much. 
I'm losing some of my pacing. So that was a new thing that is my third time through the course and I'm, I'm loving it. I can't wait to roll that out more. So that, you know, it was a new thing and I had to, tr it was uh, caused by something I noticed in my course and I, I, I found a way to address it. So you're always continually to find new things out there to make your blended experience better. Look at various options on how you can set up your course for your students. I found using the Canvas calendar was the best um, way to uh, have my lessons ready for my students. The other thing that I think is important to think about is the way the course is set up in Canvas, I think it's important to be consistent with um, how, how everything is laid out so that students can find things easily because you want them to be able to be independent and if it's hard to find things, they might struggle with that. Um, when getting started with your blended class, think about what activities you already do. Uh, in your tra traditional class, especially those that are digital. Um, think about which lessons you need, need help from the guidance of a teacher and which ones can be done independently. I looked at my assignment calendar and then I drafted which days that the students can do independently and which days that we needed to be full class. Um, I guess my, I have a few pieces of advice that I think I would share. Uh, one thing that we learned when we went to visit Huntley that has stuck with me all through the process is to think about what kinds of activities you could have kids do on their own where they would not need you and they could be independent and what kinds of activities that they absolutely, absolutely need you in the classroom for. So that helped me sort out how I could separate the content that I was already doing and I think that's important to remember that it's not necessarily a new, it shouldn't be a new prep for you with this class. It's the same content, it just might look a little bit different. So that helped me look at the class in a different way without making it feel like it was a new best advice I can give you is work with your learning support coach. Uh, Jen Madden has been my lifesaver this year. Uh, my course doesn't start until January, so I had all fall to really think about what I was going to be doing. So I met weekly with Jen every Tuesday, and I started setting up my current classes um, online with the Canvas calendar. My advice to you is this. I would suggest that you really listen to your coach and really interact and make that time valuable because that has been the biggest benefit for me. Uh, that one-on-one -on -one time, just personally seeing what I need, what I need to, to get help with, and uh, it's just been a fantastic time. It's every other week, and it's all about you, so take advantage and uh, enjoy the journey. I would say would be don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, you're not the first one that has done this now and we've had a couple um, really wonderful um, teachers create different models for you to follow. Everybody does things a little bit different and there's not one right way to do it and every class requires something um, a little bit different. So be willing to ask for help because if people um, are kind of creating a community now and are willing to be there for you. So see what other people are doing, go into their classrooms, look at their Canvas sites, kind of pick and choose what is going to be best for you and your students. You must take advantage of things that other blended teachers have done. Take it, pick their brains, look at their Canvas pages, um, use, look at their calendars, see how they handle meetings with students, what types of things they do in the classroom, out of the classroom. They don't have to teach the same subject as you in order for you to get a sense of what might work and what might not work. Reaching out to others who have been teaching blended, I think would be a huge uh, help to you. Um, and asking questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to talk to others, to talk to your learning support coach, and to ask for help. Because we're all here to help each other get be to be better at what we love doing, impacting students. You don't know what you don't know. So don't be afraid to ask your kids how things are going. 
um, what they like about the course, what they don't like about the course, and then take their advice to heart. Um, you want this to be a good experience for both you and the students, and sometimes understanding what works best for them is going to make your course stronger. So be um, open to advice from your kids. Value your students. They will let you know when things are not working. Have you given them too much to do outside? Are they not responding by doing the work? When things are good, you'll know they're good. When they're not working out, they'll let you know. And take that, that information to heart and do something about it. So that leads into being able to change and being comfortable with change. The nice thing about a blended class is there is no strict definition of what days you have to be there or what days you don't have to be there. In my course, I had the flexibility when I had a two-day lab to have a third optional day for kids who needed more time um, or even a one-day lab. I always left the second day open. Kids could take it either independent or they could be in the classroom. And then the last thing is is revision is a sign of growth. So you'll be revising your lessons, you'll be revising your Canvas course multiple times. Your first, second, third run at it probably still won't be the last run at it. So don't be afraid if you change things. It doesn't mean that it wasn't good. It just means that you have grown as a blended teacher and you know what can be better for you and for your students. Remember that Rome wasn't built in a day. Um, I have been through so many like stepping stones in building my online course in the sense that, you know, the first time I just had a couple resources and the second time I added more um, and then I keep changing it up. So don't feel bad if it's not beautiful the first time. It's not going to be. It's going to take you some time to really get to understand your students, your teaching style, and how you can best use the Canvas platform to maximize your online and in-class time lessons. There's going to be a temptation to use a lot of different tech tools to try and mix things up for students, but I think when you're first starting out, it would be good to just focus on two or three things that you're very comfortable with because then it becomes overwhelming. And actually, the kids like it better if there's just two or three things that you use consistently. Um, even though each day's activities are different, um, try to find a common routine for the, for the kids so they know what to expect. Um, students get confused uh, when using a multiple number of uh, different digital activities. For example, most every day have students um, start in Canvas. Try to organize Canvas or organize a Google site or a Google Calendar or HyperDoc or whatever works for you as the launching point so that students know where to start and where to go. Um, I use um, Canvas and I've organized my Canvas through modules. Students know to go to their Canvas announcements and then go to uh, modules and uh, from there they can find some external sites um, so they know where to start. I found that the challenges I was faced with with my students in my blended class were not unlike the challenges I'm faced with, kids not doing their homework, not being prepared when they come in. The biggest difference is there was a delay in when I provided them that feedback. So I developed several tools. Um, that students would use through technology to get that feedback more often and to get it from peers. That turned out to be a positive thing for both the students and for their peers. To make sure you are clearly communicating with all the stakeholders involved in the blended course. For example, the policy in my course at, here at Naperville North that is if you have a 69 or below, I'm going to take away your blended privileges until that's uh, fixed or dealt with. So in this case, I often have a prepared email that I use for parents that goes home and a letter that I give the student to notify them why I am asking them to spend more time with me. And so that is both the student and the parent know that, hey, this is the plan to get your student back on track. Um, I also make sure that parents and students know this policy in the beginning of the year and they sign a permission slip for that. So that would be my advice to you uh, as you're working and getting ready for blended. Good luck. So I guess my best advice is try to enjoy the year. Do the best you can. It's all good. Your students will learn something and you will learn something. So good luck, it'll be a great year.
luck. It's a wonderful experience. It's probably one of the best things that I have ever done and I'm sure it will be for you too. I hope you have a wonderful experience in Blended. Good luck and as I always say, I'll see you online.